So I'm Gus Spale. I'm a current senior here at the Journalism School at the University of Kansas, and I'm pleased to be joined by J School alumnus Kevin Harlan, who is a famous broadcaster for Turner Sports Network and for CBS. Kevin, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate your time. You are someone that I've looked up to for a very long time and someone that I've, I've memorized and I've kind of idolized growing up in my sports casting career. So thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for your kind words, Gus. Great to be on with you. And uh, you got the be- the J School buzzing about your work with all the things <laughs> you're doing and where your uh, where your career is headed. This is a uh, I'm privileged to talk to you. So thanks for having me on. And you're at the right school. This school has produced a lot of broadcasters in the past. The voice of the LA Clippers, Gary Bender, Tom Hedrick, who did the first Super Bowl, and uh, and now you'll fall right in line. So it's it's a pleasure to visit with you. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really appreciate that. And you and I were talking beforehand, you know, this I'm someone from the East Coast, but I kind of fell in love with the place when I got to visit, and it's something that I've really enjoyed. So again, it's a great school, and like you said, I could not agree more myself. But let me go back to maybe your time here at the J School, back when you were a student. What kind of programs were you involved in? What were maybe some programs that stood out in your mind? Or, you know, you have a, so, sort of kind of memories from what it was like back when you were a student here? Oh, my gosh, yeah. I remember um, how all my friends on weekends had a bunch of fun, and I was out doing games. That's what I remember. I remember uh, really dedicating myself to the craft. I, from a young age, knew that I wanted to be a, a play-by-play announcer. I was uh, lucky enough to run into the former voice of the Jayhawks, Tom Hedrick, who had broadcast the first Super Bowl for CBS Radio, the first and the fourth, the longtime voice of the Chiefs. Um, I, I got in contact with him. I flew down for a weekend, kind of like you, Gus. I'm from Green Bay, Wisconsin, so was out of my element, was out of my home state. Uh, flew down there. Tom took me under his wing once I got to the campus, filled in for him doing broadcasts in KLWN and KLZR and KANU. Uh, sat beside him and did about three or four innings of KU baseball. Uh, he put me on the KU football network as a freshman uh, doing sideline reports. Here I was 18 years old and I was doing sideline reports for the KU football games on the on the 35 station KU sports network. Was doing the pregame, halftime and postgame. So everything that he promised came true. But the thing that really resonated with me is that I was going to one of the top journalism schools in the country. Um, For writing, there may not be a better school in the country, journalism-wise, for writing and all the different spokes that that stick out from that. But what Tom sold me on and what I've begun to realize as I was there is that the broadcast department was just as strong with just as many uh, famous alums that had gone there, guys that had uh, walked that campus, gone to Flint and and taken those experiences and then uh, took that on a trajectory to network broadcasting news, sports, documentaries, whatever. And so uh, when I was there in that culture, um, it was the perfect setting for me to live out my dream. I, I knew I was getting a great education, but then to go there and have all the different broadcast opportunities in school and outside of school, it was second to none. And I wouldn't have traded one second for being on that campus, going to Flint, being in the William Allen White School of Journalism and and, and becoming a a Jayhawk alum. It was for the best years of my life. And I feel the same way too. As a current student and a current senior, I feel the same way. Again, going out of my comfort zone, I was with the Rockers for two summers up in Green Bay. And Again, you mentioned being out of your comfort zone. It's a huge part of it. But again, I could not trade this experience for anything. And and kind of like you mentioned, Brian Haney, the current voice of the of the Jayhawks, he kind of has taken me under his wing, similar right. to what Tom Hedrick did. And and that's just and that you know it's a lot of different alums working together. So that's awesome you're here. I guess I'll I'll ask you now too. You know, kind of what are maybe the biggest lessons that you've learned from your time at the J School you currently use today when you still broadcast games, whether it's football or basketball or any of the other sports you do, or maybe the biggest lessons that you've had really since that time? Well, I can tell you right now, in this bookshelf right in back of me, I've got a book by a guy named John Bremner. And John Bremner was a a, a legendary uh, journalism teacher, taught editing, writing, how to use words. The book, I think, is called Words on Words. And... Um, and every summer, I'll take some time and kind of go through some of the things that I had highlighted, taken John's course, notes I had written, but I have the book right back up here. And um, that was just one example of something I took away uh, from going into that uh, wonderful Flint and, and, and being a part of all these young 
uh, not just broadcasters, people in writing, people in public relations and marketing and editing and producing, uh, radio, TV, film, documentaries, newspaper. It was like this perfect convergence of all these young kids that were just like me. All they wanted to do in the business was live out their dream. Well, I know I'm living out my dream every single broadcast that I do. And I've watched where they've all gone and I know they're doing the same thing. So going to go into a school like KU, it, it's not just going to a, a, a college, it's going to an environment and a culture that, that stimulates that growth, that perpetuates the success they've had with other students, that has the best voices and the best minds uh, in journalism to help guide and nurture and take these kids to other levels. I know it did for me. So when I would walk up the hill and across that campus and go into Flint Hall or go to a couple other buildings around campus that were involved in, in, in broadcasting at that time, I was a broadcast journalism major. I just didn't want to be a communicator. I wanted, I wanted something with a little meat to it. So I took a lot of writing courses, thus the John Bremner book up here and the John Bremner course. And, and I took some PR classes and some marketing classes. My dad always said, my dad was a journalism major at Marquette and he was the, the student uh, editor for the sports uh, section of the, of the student run newspaper. And he always said, the great thing about journalism is you may go into a school or into a class as a freshman and think, you know, I wanna be on the air or I wanna be an editor, I wanna be a producer. But the great thing is, is in that, that the, the wheel has so many spokes to it, journalism is like that marketing and advertising and public relations and just all these different areas you can get into. And I'm thinking now, if I were if I were a student coming to Lawrence and stepping on that campus, it would be like hundreds of different things. Back when I went, back in, in the late 70s and early 80s, uh, there was a wide variety and I had my choice and I tried to dip my toe in different things to see if maybe there was something that, that resonated more than broadcasting. Well, for me, that was my path. And by the grace of God and all the great people that helped me at KU, I was able to follow my dream. But I'm telling you, I tell kids now all the time, I say, go to that J school and make sure you, you, you canvas everything on the journalism landscape, everything in the School of Mass Communications, all the different opportunities that are out there. You may think you wanna go down this road, but the better path is going over here. And, and, and that's the great thing about going to a place like KU with a tradition and a history of journalism, mass communication that I think is second to none. They, they've got the litany of broadcasters, of great writers, uh, of, of people that have done in documentaries and film and, and, and all the different other uh, things that jump off of those, those starting points. Um, so th they've got their own great history. And of course, William Allen White and what he stood for and, and how he you know, was a newspaper editor in and, and Emporia and how he was able to take uh, all the things he learned there and, and then made sure that, that those principles and those paths, those ethics that he followed rang true for generations to come. And I can proudly say that I follow many of those in my everyday work right now with CBS and with Turner Broadcasting and Westwood One. Yeah, and I totally agree with that. And again, you kind of mentioned all those aspects. I mean, there's a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different ways to get involved. And, you know, I've kind of tried to do the same thing too, whether it's doing the writing. I did that a lot freshman year. More, It's now more towards the broadcasting, which is something I've always had maybe a passion for. And that's a great way to, you know, stay with variety. And, and that's a great way to still get involved. But what about this place? You kind of mentioned it, but what about this place makes you want to stay involved in that? Because again, you are a great alum. You obviously do a lot of work during throughout the season, doing a lot of different sports. But what is it about this place that keeps you involved? You know, I think it's probably the same thing. It begins with the same thing that makes everybody proud of their university. It's, it's sometimes... Uh, passed on from generation to generation. Grandparents went there, parents went there, their kids might go there. So there's always that built-in thing about about the college and 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 being the state university and uh, generations have gone there from one family. Um, but but for me, being the first person from my family to go to KU, um, I, I would tell you that the history of the place, uh, where it is, the friendliness of the people, the many people from around the country, like you say, Gus, yourself, from the East Coast and Massachusetts. I got to meet kids from Massachusetts, from Florida, from Texas, from California, from Washington, people from all over the country. And, and that's what makes a university so great. But in particular, KU, 
there, there, there's something about a Midwestern school that I think is very, very special. Whether it's the teachers that are there, the history of the buildings, the beautiful campus, all the different things are connected in some way, form or fashion. Uh, you know, not to mention, you know, the, the, the doormat clearly in, in the minds of so many people are the, uh, you know, the nationally ranked basketball program and the ascending football program. And they see that Jayhawk logo. And, and, and alums like me take pride win or lose, regardless of how, the, how the, the, the team may be doing, when you see that logo, it automatically triggers all the wonderful moments you shared on that campus. The different living experiences, whether it's Greek or the dorms or a house outside, it doesn't matter because you're part of one family. And I always felt like going there, not knowing a soul, not knowing a, a single kid my age, uh, I immediately made friends from the moment I stepped on that campus and I just think it, that school conveys so much of that, you know, welcome home, we'll embrace you, you're now one of us. Those are hard things to find at many schools, but not at KU. That, that's the one thing that probably resonates in my heart more than anything else. I always felt like when I stepped back on campus, whether I was coming back for my sophomore year, junior or senior year, uh, or whether I go and visit, and when I took my kids there on campus, I always kind of felt like I was going home. And I think that's a very special feeling. Yeah, I, and I feel the same way too. You know, I go home obviously for Thanksgiving, for Christmas, and for holidays, and it's great to see family and spend some time. We have some family I don't, I don't get to see too often, but like you said, when I get off the plane and when I drive back to Lawrence, it kind of feels that like welcome home vibe, which is something that I, you know, try not to ever take for granted. So the last question here I'll ask you is, you know, you and I were talking before. You're doing, you know, obviously you're doing the Miami game this weekend. You know, when you called the Dolphins game one time, it was the double duty game when you had you're calling two games at once. Do you get a lot of memories from that? I mean, that was without question one of the best pieces of work I've seen from any broadcaster ever. You just go, kind of go back into that a little bit, and what was that like? Well, you're kind to say that, Gus. Thank you. Um, it was just one of those moments that just the, the, the timing. So a lot of things in this business happen without any preparation. It's all kind of organic, and I think the truest, most sincere, most genuine moments are the ones that are organic and not that are planned and plotted and rehearsed or written down or anything like that. And that was just a situation where the Chiefs were trying to get a home field. They needed a win and they needed Miami to win in Foxborough against Tom Brady and Bill Belichick. And at the same time that the Chiefs were coming from behind to beat Los Angeles, the, the Chargers, uh, the Dolphins on the road on the last weekend of the season in Chile, Foxborough, Massachusetts, we're coming back to beat Brady on a last second, last minute touchdown throw by their quarterback to their tight end. And a Chiefs play would happen, then that play would happen. And they were the, the timing, it was almost like you couldn't have choreographed it any better. And I could see the, the picture uh, on the floor on a monitor that we had in our booth. I was working with Rich Gannon, and I could see it down there. So I'd be watching our game. They're not second down and 10. And by the way, in Foxborough right now, they got it first and goal to go. So they'd have a play and then we'd have a play live at Arrowhead and then they'd have a play. And it just kind of worked out. So there are many moments like that that happen in a career. Again, you can't you can't plan it. Um, you can not even really hope for it because I think if you're hoping for something like that to happen, it interferes with the job at hand. So I always, I always kind of just make sure that, that I'm loose, I'm relaxed, I'm ready. And, uh, and 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 I, I, I could probably go back and say, maybe I had that same experience that I learned at, at KU, where I was juggling maybe an exam in Brenner's class the next day, but doing a high school game in Topeka the night before, and somehow had to make those two things work. Luckily, I always tell my kids, um, I, I, uh, I was a broadcaster and a student at the same time. They were running concurrently. And I would go to class and I'd leave the hill and I'd get in my car and I'd drive to some small Kansas town and do a football game and then drive back that night and go to class the next morning and then would drive into Kansas City and produce the Chiefs on a weekend. And like I said, I'd hear all these stories from all my buddies about, oh, I had this party and this experience and had this fun and we went over here. <laughs> and uh, and I'd say, yeah, and I drove all night to get uh, from Emporia back to KU so that I could go and do the Jayhawks that Saturday morning, but I wouldn't have traded anything for it. I, I, I think... Um, uh, the fact that I knew that I was uh, with friends and in a, in a, a safe environment, a wonderful, thriving environment, um, but but knew that I had uh, some some school work to do and had some things outside of school. Uh, as I swirl it around, uh, it, it was the perfect recipe for me. 
And I think it would be for any kid that would look boy or girl, uh, journalism major or not, that would consider that school. Uh, there's so much more than just a major. There's all the life experiences that you have that only a school like, like KU can provide. And that's probably the richest thing I took from my four years uh, four years in Lawrence. I loved it. It went by too fast. I always envied my buddies that went for five years. They they went for that extra year because they always had so much fun. In a retrospect, I wish I had a fifth year too. It would have been it would have been a blast. I kind of wish that too. I'm set to graduate next May, and I'm already starting to feel like you know I want that extra year, that more time. But you mentioned a lot of the points that I feel today that I'm doing in terms of trying to do different things at once, being a student and a broadcaster at the same time. It's it's never easy, but I. One trader for the world. Well, Kevin, Gus, let me let me tell you something, Gus. With yeah. your voice, go out in the world. You're going to get a job. The lickety split. You're going. You're oh, going to. I, I really find, that, You're going to find great, great success. I know you. Thank I just you so just in the little time so we've had a chance to talk and listening to your delivery, uh, you're you're right on track. You're you're ahead of uh, 99 percent of the other kids that are oh, coming out well. to watch your career with great interest. Oh, I appreciate that. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate the time. Good luck on the call this weekend. We'll talk soon. All right, Gus, thank you for having me. Nice to visit with you. Thank you.